Radiant Risings, I'm coming at you with another rant, <laughs> you could say. Um, and today I want to talk about identifying your ops. And although there are many types of ops, you know, ops can be of any race, any gender, any sex, you know, any creed, any class. But today I want to talk about a specific op. And this op can come from the group or the demographic that we call POC, which is people of color. Um, the interesting thing about people who can identify as POC is that you can be a person of color, but your, identify, your identification can still stay white. And so it's important to have a conversation about that because we will embrace them you know, as black people, as black indigenous people. But there's this pressure from some members of the POC population to perform whiteness at a greater capacity because people who are Caucasian and identify with whiteness are looking at them saying, hey, we know you, you know, we know you're a person of color. Um, you want to get these privileges, you know, you have to work for it and so um a lot of times those people some of them are used to infiltrate spaces and to curry favor um from those you know in the black community who are still being marginalized and pushed to the fringes of society because they have not assimilated in a way that uh, mainstream can capitalize off of them or profit off of them. You know, um, we've heard about how Kamala went to Howard, which is an um, historically black college. And we're just going to go ahead and call a thing a thing. You know, um, a lot of times people who graduate from historically black colleges um, ascend into the elite bourgeois and that and though they are still black it's a different kind of blackness it's not um it's a blackness that is often anti-indigenous it's an it's a blackness it's a blackness that disassociates itself from our indigenous black ancestors um for the sake of being seen as um, civilized and um, uh, profoundly intellectual. And let's be clear, um, colleges aid in you becoming a smarter person. Smartness does not equate um, spiritual intellect, emotional intellect. You can have a great memory and know how to retain a lot of information and cite a lot of sources that you gained while you were in these academic institutions. But again, um, having the ability to do those things um, speaks to how smart you are. But let's not conflate um, intellect with with being smart. You know, a sp uh, uh, that's why they call phone smart. Smartphone may not have that much intellectual or spiritual um, wisdom, you know, and experience, but it's still smart, you know. So um, just wanted to, you know, clear that up. But not to belabor this video, um, when you're dealing with racially ambiguous people, it brings up a proverb for me um, of, they say, what's the strongest in you is what you feed. And so you have to be mindful, be, be demure and mindful. Let me stop with racial, with some racially ambiguous people at their intentions. Like what part of themselves are they feeding? Are they feeding that classist, um, elitist, um, oppressive, colonial ancestry that may be in them? You know, and pretending to be down and pretending to be 
rooted and pretending to be connected uh, in order to uh, beguile you into assimilation and, and losing who you are so that you can no longer speak to speak for those people who need to be represented in your community. Years ago, I was approached by a, um, a girl from the Philippines who had graduated from Harvard and she wanted to mold me and, um, something in my spirit just wouldn't let it happen. And, um, I have, you know, had to take some, um, take some L's because of that, you know, my, my art and my storytelling and my presence in social media could have probably made it a lot further, but would I be myself, you know, would I have turned into the being that I am today? And I seriously doubt it. So, you know, it does come with some L's, you know, you do have to take some L's, you, you know, integrity, um, it cost, you know, so yeah, that's what this video is about. You know, it's just like, yeah, we we all got melanin, but our melanin is set up different. And sometimes our melanin can exclude us if our a melanin um, upholds and represents and acknowledge those indigenous and aboriginal parts of ourselves that a lot of times society is trying to erase and suppress. You know, we want to say everything is anti-black, but it's not really anti-black, it's anti-indigenous. And when we talk about indigene, and when we talk about aborigine, we're not talking about the Pocahontas kind. We're talking about the big nose, the big lips, the, the dark, dark blue-black skin. Indigenous. Indigo. A man, a woman. So, um, yeah. That's all I really had. Like, you know, just pay attention because we're not all trying to be the melting pot. You know, we're not all trying to assimilate to be the same thing. We're trying to be that gumbo, you know, um, and that gumbo means that you get to be your authentic self and we just taste good together. You know, that's why I'm thankful that I was brought up in Louisiana because, baby, we make gumbo in Louisiana. You understand me? We don't we don't do fondue. Where everything just have to melt together and be one consistent thing. No, everybody get to be their own thing. And we just taste good together. Amen, a woman. So y'all um, take that, you know, those little nuggets, those little gems. And, you know, just pay attention. You know, observe people. And, you know, have a blessed day. Love y'all. Later. Later.